Yo, what's going on guys? Amper here, and here's the 3k subscriber special. So initially I was going to do just like a free giveaway or something, but then I realized that wouldn't really benefit you guys since you wouldn't be learning a lot from this. And also there's been like some people like complaining in my server that the stuff that I do isn't advanced enough and stuff, and that they want to see some more, I guess, useful things like frameworks and stuff. So for the 3k subscriber special, I'm going to be showing you guys a skill framework that's going to include cooldowns, replication, um, all that cool stuff, module scripts, um, a lot of pretty advanced stuff. So if you're like a beginner and you have a difficult time uh, already doing my tutorials, then maybe this video isn't for you. But uh, if you think that the tutorials that I've been doing are like way too easy, uh, this one is for you. So this is actually going to be a series, so I'm going to start off with just the framework this time, and then we're going to work and eventually fully complete that framework by the end of this series. Um, it's going to be... This video is going to be probably the hardest one since has like a lot of setup and you, there's not really too much of a result there's no vfx nothing like that so once again i'm going to warn you guys before you start this tutorial that this isn't just like super easy to understand there's some weird stuff in here and um it's not like a vfx skill type thing it's like a whole framework so for just this video there's not going to be any flashy stuff just code next video we're gonna try to implement like an actual skill but yeah this is like a skill framework so let's get started so first things first we're gonna need some setup so in our remote uh, replicated storage we're just gonna add a folder for our remotes so the first two things we're gonna need is a remote event we're gonna call this um, effects oops nice okay and then we're also going to need a remote function and we can just call this oops, server cool so i'm going to go to tell you guys what these do later um next we're going to create a folder called replicated and in here we're going to put two modules our cooldown module because cool um, don't name it cooldowns. I think I'm just gonna name it cooldown. Cooldown module, not cooldowns module. It doesn't matter. You can change the name, whatever. Just make sure you change like the name in your other scripts as well. But yeah, okay, so we're gonna have a cooldown module. Uh, we are also going to have a skill sets module. This is like the different skill sets, like if you were doing an element based game, you could have a skill set in here called fire water or like if you're doing a jojo game you can have your stands just in here uh let's see and then server script service we're gonna add a server script name server handler by the way huge credits to one of my devs um cry uh, he's part of our dev team and he's like really cracked uh, he does a lot of skill based stuff so I'll I took some inspiration from his work but yeah uh, and then inside this server uh, handler we're gonna add a folder we're just gonna call it moves and in here we can add our uh, modules I'm gonna call this one combat because for today we're just gonna set up the framework and then we're gonna use a test skill which is just gonna be an M1 so M1s are part of the combat skill set so I'm gonna put that in there next we're also gonna have a module script this is outside of the moves folder and we're gonna call it inputs so this is kind of like a module that'll keep track of our players inputs and stuff so we can access player inputs from the server and we're also gonna make a module called functions Oops, I spelled this wrong. Make sure you don't spell this wrong. Functions. And in here, there's just going to be 
like our main functions and stuff that our framework is going to use. Then the starter character scripts, we're going to add something called a skill replicator. So this is going to take in our inputs and replicate all of our skills. And then when here, within here, we're going to need a module. We're going to call this module the effects module, just effects. And within that, we got to add our effects module for our moveset. And our only moveset right now is combat. So we're going to have a combat uh, module within this effects thing. All right. So we've got quite a bit of a setup here, lots of scripts already. We're going to start simple, we're going to go from our little skills replicator, go from client to, and work to server and then back. So within our skills replicator, there's some things that we kind of always define. That's our player and character. And then two services that we often define are the user input service and the run uh, replicated storage. since client is going to access a lot of stuff from replicated storage. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to define our remotes here. We have our server uh, remote function, which is like right here, and then our effect event, which is right here. And then we are going to um, require both of the modules that we loaded in in our replicated. These are the replicated modules, so obviously we're going to need to require those on our client and basically what require does is it just loads this module it makes a copy and returns it back to our client here and we are also going to need to require our um, our effects module which is just inside the skill replicator right here and we're going to go ahead and define what's sets or skill sets that we have right now or we are available to right now so in the future we could have like more sets in here but for now i'm just gonna put in we're just gonna use this combat skill set but in the future we could also add a movement one i'm just going to show you guys that you can put more than one skill set in here and these are the sets that you have access to so we're going to do something kind of weird here we're going to use a coroutine so reason why we're using a code routine is because there's error handling. I'm not going to do the error handling quite yet. I'll do that in the future once we actually you know have a skill. So for now I'm just going to set it up like this. So input began user input service dot input began connect function. I'll make this bigger so you guys can see better. There we go. Function and user input and then this is a game processed event so as usual if it's a game processed event like if we're typing or something then we return n and we're also going to have to find a couple variables here that we're going to use for our skill replication and that is the skill what skill set it belongs to and what the input is and right now they're all nil we don't know what they are just based off of mouse click but if we do know that our user input dot user input type is equal to um, dot user input type dot mouse button one, so that's if we're m1ing, then our input right is equal to an m1. Now, otherwise, it's not an m1. We're gonna assume that it's just a normal key then. So you can add more of these. These like conditions like for the right mouse button, mouse button two, mouse button three, like scroll wheel, whatever, that's not on your keyboard. But yeah, the only one that I'm gonna use for this one is just the mouse button one. So otherwise if our input is equal to, um, otherwise our, imp if our input is from the keyboard, then we can just assume that the input is equal to the user input key code name so like if I press the key W the input would come the the key W it'll just be W all right cool so now that we've done this uh, we also since it's an M1 right we should check for if we have any weapons or anything here but for the sake of this tutorial I'm just gonna assume that if it's an M1 I can know exactly what data is gonna be passed through so 
this is like the info variable so like the parameters that you're going to pass through and obviously your parameters are going to vary based on what key you pressed but for now i'm just going to pass in some random data called test this doesn't really do anything but just prove to you that we are passing data now once we know right that what our input is we should be able to look in our skill set find that input and if there is an input we should know what the skill is right because if we know what the skill set is and we know what key we're pressing we should know what ability within that skill set we have right so let's go over to our little skill set module here um, once again to prove to you that um, we can actually accommodate for more than one skill set I'm going to put in two skill sets here, combat and movement. In the future, you probably put like fire, water, whatever. So here's just an example of what your skill set might look like. You have your key, remember, like how we have an M1, right? And it, here's some information about it. The name of the skill that's related to the M1 key is just called M1. The cooldown is 0.2 seconds. And then any extra info you have can go in here. So more parameters that you can pass in, potentially. All right, so that's our little skill sets module. Make sure it's like named correctly. All of your brackets are correct. These are curly brackets right here. Uh, but these are square brackets. So, cool. Uh, let's go back to our skill replicator so now that we know right the information we've gone over to our skill sets here we found the information well we actually need to retrieve that information right we know that there's information there we just need to retrieve it uh, probably the easiest way to do that is just to loop through our little available sets right and if one of those available sets right has that input then our skill is equal to the um the thing that it returns based off our input so if, if we had m1 if m1 was our input so to go into the skill sets v which would in this case be combat since combat does have an m1 input and an input so it would return all this right here that's cool. Now, once we know that what like skill, we also know what skill set it was from, and skill set is just equal to v, right? Because we're looping in for every. This is the index, and this is the value at that index, right? So the value at that index would just be the skill set. It'd be movement or combat. So boom, there we go. So if we do have a skill, that means we did find something within our available sets, then now is the time we do all like the cooldown checking and everything and also we could do a cooldown check up here honestly we should do a cooldown check right here uh but yeah let's get into our cooldowns then how, how are we going to do the cooldown thing? the cooldown is the second and the last well not the last but for the last of this video that's going to be replicated to the client like i'm specifically from the replicated storage replicated module let's get that done so for the cooldown module here it is and now we're gonna go in and add some things so local cooldowns so this is like a, another this is the actual list right of the cooldowns cooldown you're gonna need to add a function just called add cooldown name length length of the cooldown and the player who is sending this cooldown. Name is just the name of the skill or whatever action that you're doing that's going to go on cooldown. So cooldowns, cooldowns is the list by the way of all the player's cooldowns and stuff. Name is equal active is equal true. So basically we're making a little array and we're setting active equal to true right 
that's basically what we're doing here. Uh, and not right cooldowns name and I guess we're going to add a value within this thing called time. Then, so if we don't have a um, current time, then we are going to add a cooldowns name time. We're going to turn that into zero. Now, next thing we're going to do is that cooldowns name time plus equals one. This is a little bit complicated, I'll explain it later. And we're going to check our version. So this is which specific time that I launched this move. to delay this um, next action, this is basically perverting the cooldown function. And then if cooldowns name and cooldowns name time, so if this is the same checking version, right, then we're going to revert our cooldown. to put another equal sign here, my fault. Uh, for a quick rundown, I guess, this is just storing a version copy and then delaying the cooldown by the length of the cooldown. And the cooldown just reverts and sets our certain skills cooldown to nil. That's all it really does. So uh, yeah, you could also specify like player and stuff, but I'm not going to do that right now. Now next, we're also going to add a function that kind of just checks our cooldown. Oh. Name of the cooldown, right? We're going to check the skill. If currently we do have something in here, that's if we do have like a cooldown active. Otherwise, we just return false. So yeah, that's basically what we're going to do here. That's all that we need for this cooldown section. We're going to go more into this next time, but for now, this is what we're just going to put. All it does is it checks a cooldown and it adds a cooldown. It waits the length of the cooldown and then it resets it. And it keeps track of the version as well. Right, uh, so after that, we are going to check our cooldowns, right? Since we now do have a cooldown module. So check cooldown skill.name and then send our player to. And if the function in the cooldown, where is it? Returns false, that means there's no, no cooldown, right? Then oh also we need to check if our character is stunned. We're going to give the character an attribute called stun later, but not right now. This is just for preparation of that. And our character we get attribute uh, tacking. It's also field false. These are two character attributes. I'm going to zoom out a little. Okay, I zoomed out a little bit too much. I don't know why it's so slow with the zooming in and zooming out. I hope this is readable. I'm just checking, like, Okay, are we on cooldown? Are we stunned? Are we already attacking? So if we are doing that, we are going to set our attribute of attacking equal to true. And then we're also going to print something here. Just because we're about to fire our skill. So fire skill. We're going to do obviously something. Uh, you're going to get rid of this little print statement later, but I just want to show you that this is all working and what passes to what. So next we're going to go ahead and 
invoke server. So we're about to tell the server that, yo, we're gonna do something. And I'll show you guys what these parameters mean later. There's a lot of stuff that we gotta go through. So, and it's all kind of out of order since there's no particular order in setting this up. But uh, all you gotta need to know is that for our server, we're gonna take in what input what like action we're about to do um, some information here some other some other parameters here that we don't need specifically for a skill all right so remember how we did this over here we can also add this like big if statement up there since technically we can't really do anything right if we're it's done or doing something already so cool now if we do have info so if we do have some information that we got back or we're about to send if there's no information it probably means we have nothing to do or there's nothing really that we need to do this is just a check to make sure that the key that we pressed does have information it is not some stupid key like the enter key or something or like a backspace key which you're never going to use if so then we are doing a move and we should add a cooldown for this so skill.name skill.cooldown remember that we specified this cooldown over in skill sets Right, we're gonna add the cooldown, and after all that, we are going to set our attributes of attacking back to false. So cool. Uh, you can honestly just put put all of this in here since I don't see a reason why you wouldn't. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up pretty much the same thing but for an input ended. So, can't spell input ended. We're going to make a code routine. This is just something that's error handling. I'm going to show you guys. We are, I think we are going to use that once today, like the actual error handling, just not for this particular part yet. Yeah, here we go. I'm gonna invoke the server. We're gonna tell the server that we're ending our input here. What key that we let go of. Uh, this is not gonna be used today, but this is also going to be very useful. In the future if you're going to do something like a hold move so yep. now we are going to need to actually start these code routines here otherwise you're just not going to do anything so you can start them by using resume and for the last part we're just going to set up an on client client replication for our uh, for our effect replicator on client, it's an on client effect replicator. That's the last thing we're gonna do for this script. And basically, what I'm doing right here is I'm gonna send some information in a table through, and then I'm gonna convert it back to two variables a tuple, effects name, and parameters. And then I'm gonna actually print out these things for you guys so you, so you see that the information that we're passing back from the server is accurate and then the effects effects name this is for actually executing the um, effects you're gonna see how this works later 
uh, now that we have our little main client thing down, it's pretty complicated, but we're getting there. We're gonna head over to our server. As usual, we're going to define some of these basic variables, and this time on server, we're gonna require our little server, server modules, inputs, and functions, right? And we're also gonna need to give our players those stunned and attacking values and set them initially to false. I don't think you actually have to do this, but I'm gonna do it. So right here, we got stunned, attacking. So everything is good. Uh, right. Now we have everything set up. We just need to pick up our server inputs. So I'm gonna show you guys what this little server remote dot on server invoke does. So remember how I used to only use remote events. Now I'm gonna use this because it actually sends information back from the server. That's crazy, right? That's also why within our client script, why I put it like this. So as you see, when I invoke server, I define that as a variable. So basically what the server returns is gonna go into this fire variable. And in the future, this is going to be very useful in case the server does need to tell our client if something went successfully, something went unsuccessfully, anything that we need to uh, kind of know. So here's, this is just for keeping track of our um, inputs. So if our actions input began or input ended, we don't actually have an input begin yet. I'm gonna do that in the next part of this video. Next video, um, since right now we don't need that. This this would probably be a part three type thing, these two. For like uh, specific types of skills, like holding skills. And once again, we're gonna check our player on the server this time if we're stunned and if we're attacking, just sanity check, make sure our player is not lying about they're stunned or attacking and after that we're going to fire move and functions well it's in there so let's go into our little function script it's kind of empty right now but we're going to fill it up so the first uh, function that's going to go in there is I'll just put in the entire segment so you guys can see we have fire move all this does is it uh, unpacks all of our parameters that we sent through into data, move name, move set. Um, we're gonna check if our player is stunned. If we're not stunned, this is like the last time we're checking this, but if we're not stunned, then we define a skill. And this is where we do some error handling. We're gonna look for the specific skill within moves, so moves. And in this case, the move set was combat. The move name was M1. And our player and data were just data was test, I think, and player is just our player. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna run whatever was in here. And if that fails, then it's just gonna warn what failed. Otherwise, uh, it'll return this skill, send back whatever information back to our uh, server, and then our server is gonna send that information back to our client. Now, this right here is the fire client with distance. Uh, this is like the client replication, but a little bit more fancy. What this does, it basically checks through all of our players, finds the player's models, and makes sure for a, if the diff distance between our player and um, the other players is like less than or equal to the distance that we specify, then we replicate that effect. Otherwise, we don't need to replicate the effect because they're too far away. And this is just some easy way to save some performance. So yeah, as I said, this is advanced. So if you're not getting anything, uh, I would not recommend this video. But yeah, let's keep on going. If you're not confused already, let's go back to our server handler. So we're firing move now. That's pretty nice. What does that tell us? That means that we're going into functions. We go into functions. And within functions, we're looking for our move set, move name. So that means within here, script up parent moves, the move set, which is combat, and then we're running something. Right now, our combat, this is where all the server side stuff for your specific skills are gonna go. So the best way that I can put this is that this is like kind of your move set on server. 
this is everything that's happening. So for example, for this M1 skill on server, it's gonna say print, it's gonna say test M1. Oh wait, sorry, this is the wrong one. This is the wrong one, my fault. So the, the um, thing that we're gonna print in here is just M1. We're gonna say that we're gonna get our little data, right? And then we're gonna print reach server. That's all it's really gonna do. And then we're gonna fire client with this back to our client, right? And we're gonna tell the client to do something later. Uh, we're gonna need to find functions as well. And that's pretty easy to do. Just put it out outside of this and just call it functions like that. Very nice. So once we send it over to the server, it's going to send that to functions. Functions is going to send that information to the client. Right, so now we need to go to the client. And the stuff that I'm putting in here, let me zoom out so you guys can see. Uh, I can't, I don't know why it's like super delayed when I scroll in to zoom for you guys. Hold on, I'm gonna make this a little bit more clear, so I'll separate it all out. This is pretty much pretty much what it is. We're sending in um, the origin position, distance for the remote and M1. I remember when you go back to functions, this is what I said. The uh, distance was we sent the origin args dot distance args was just the stuff that we were sending. Uh, so yeah, let's go back to where was that? That was in combat. So now that we are sending to the client, right? Let's go back to our client script. It goes in here because we're going sending an on client event. We're getting all of that, and now we're gonna go in. To our VFX module. Let's go into our VFX module. It's pretty blank right now, but we're gonna add some stuff. Uh, I'm going to prepare some things. So I'll call this base effects, just so we can make this easier to read. We're gonna we're gonna put some functions in here that um, we're not going to use yet, but these are useful in the future and these are probably things that you might just understand how to use as well for example fetch effect we're just going to return the effect within this base effects module load we're going to add a module within to our base effects and then we're going to return that effect back So nice. Last thing we're gonna do is we're going to do the actual manual loading, like the starter loading. This is gonna go in uh, to whatever's within this folder. So like combat would load that into the base effects. So yeah, we're the only one that we're really gonna use this load right now. So let's go into our combat right now. It does absolutely nothing. And this is probably the easiest part. I'm just gonna put in this. So within here, we have a move called M1, and this is just the M1 effect, and we're just gonna print test M1 effect when it all works. So let's run this script right now, and let's see all the amazing stuff that we just made. Oh, right away, we have an error. So what would that error be? Oh. That's pretty silly of me. Let's go to skill replicator really quick. I, I kind of mis, mistyped something here. So in our cooldown here, we're not checking skill.name. We are just checking M1, since that is the name of our skill. <laughs> 
cool. Let's see if this works now. Wow, look at all that. So the first thing that happens is that we're firing the skill when we find out that we do have information on that skill. It reaches the server through the little fire move functions. Fire move. It's going to go in there. Find the server side combat. Server side combat's here. Reached server. All right. Now the next thing that happens is that we return all of this uh, information that we got from skill sets or wait hold on yeah we return all of the information that we got from our little server right here which is return move and move is it just happens oops uh, our move happens to be m1 and we send a data table that's worth nothing that was the information table there was nothing in it now once we've done all that Right, let's go back to our server-side combat. I think I might have closed out of it on accident. But the server-side combat tells our client, sends it back down here, its parameters, the effects name, and then we go into our VFX module, which is right here. Loads that mod, uh, finds, and this is already loaded. It loads the combat module script, so it's within the base effects. It finds that, which is called combats, which is just the contents of this, and then it prints test m1 effect. That's cool, right? Probably not. It's, it's probably pretty nerdy looking and like really weird, and you probably don't understand any of it if you're just a normal viewer. But that's essentially what this system does. It's really um, simple once you kind of use this system a lot. But for the first time, it's probably kind of weird because. There's a lot of interesting things that I've done in here. But yeah, let's test this cooldown thing too. Remember how we have a cooldown module and then how I set the cooldown to be 0.2? Let's see the cooldown. As you can see, I'm gonna like start jitter clicking. It's only like firing once every 0.2 seconds. So that is proof that our uh, cooldowns are working. And every time there's no errors, it always prints back. La the last thing that it prints is always test m one effect. Nothing's out of order. It's all in the same order every single time. And yeah, essentially this is the type of framework that you want to have because the ease of just adding abilities is pretty insane. You just add the effect script here within your uh, module. And then on the server side ones, you just do the server side stuff, like all the hitboxes, damage, all that. It's very easy. It's very efficient and everything is really clean. There are some things that we didn't get to use really, but we are, might, you might find these things useful in the future, such as the version checker. It just makes sure if the um, current input is matched up. If not, then it's not matched up. And yeah, now even though this um, framework is pretty advanced, it gets even worse. Uh, there's better frameworks out there. It gets a lot more complicated. So um, even if you use this framework, just expect for you to have to change it eventually. Probably make your own framework. This is just like an easy one to get you started with. So yeah, that was a 3K special. It's kind of a weird video, very long video too. A lot of content in this one video. Uh, I hope you guys like this one. Make sure you like and subscribe. Thank you for 3K again, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.